If you're struggling to stay on top of your social media posts, you're not creating consistently, and the process of churning out content is just too overwhelming, I got you. In this video, I will show you how to create a social media content calendar in Asana, step-by-step, step, so you can be consistent on social media and no longer fight with the content chaos. Ready? Let's do this. Hi, my lovely people. It's Natalia, and welcome back to my channel, where I share super ash ideas on content creation for entrepreneurs and creatives. One of the biggest challenges any creator faces is taming the overwhelming amount of content that needs to be created. In today's video, we're putting an end to disorganized, inconsistent social media profiles because I'm going to show you how to create an easy content calendar to harness the chaos. When you're a creator of any type, whether you're on Instagram, running a blog, recording videos for YouTube, or whatever other platforms you're on, there's always a lot to juggle with when producing content. That's why you need a good system to manage everything in one place and something that's going to keep you on track with every single piece of content you create. Today, I'm showing you how to create a content calendar in Asana, which is one of my favorite project management platforms, and it's free to use too. A little side note before we start, I've actually used Asana for years and loved it very much, both for managing any projects I had going on or handling my content calendars. I have since switched over completely to Notion, which is where I manage all of my content from, and I've actually shared a video about my process there too, which I'll link in the description down below. However, there are many people out there that feel a little bit intimidated by Notion, and Asana is very intuitive and may seem slightly more digestible for some of you, so I decided to create a video on this too. Without further ado, let's jump to Asana and start creating our content calendar. Now, the first thing you want to do is to create a new project in Asana. So to do this, you can either access it from the homepage, which is the page that you land on whenever you log into Asana, and it's got the project section. You can simply go to create project. But in any other place that you're at, maybe you're in my tasks, maybe you're browsing through other projects, you want to quickly create a project, you can simply go to your team and then hit that plus sign. Now you have the ability to either use a template or create a blank one. And although Asana has a content calendar template or an editorial template, I don't really find it to be that useful because in my opinion, it's just not the best way to manage content and all the posts that you'll create this way can quickly become a mess. And of course, that being said, if you need a simple solution, you can just quickly go for this one, but I'm going to show you how to quickly create a content calendar in Asana from a blank project. Let's name the project content calendar. And now we need to choose which view we want to default to. And Asana has quite a few options in here. You've got the list view, the board view, the timeline view, which is a premium option only, and a calendar view. And of course, for your convenience, it's easier to just look to the right and see the previews so that you can choose easily. Of course, the most obvious one here is the calendar, but I find the board view to be the easiest way to manage content during the creation process itself. And of course, you'll be able to quickly switch between the different views, so make sure to keep watching so I can show you how it's done. Next, you're going to be asked whether you want to start adding tasks straight away, share your project with other teammates, of course, if you're collaborating with anyone, or to set up your workflow, which is an Asana premium feature. I'm going to go straight for the tasks here and I'll show you how to actually set up your calendar. Before we move on to structuring the project, let's hit this icon in here to choose our own color for the project as well as the icon. I'm not going to change this one because it's blue, so it's perfect for me, obviously, and go for the calendar icon so that I can quickly identify what kind of project I'm dealing with here. Now that we have it out of the way, what you want to think about is how to actually structure your calendar. Starting with the board view, we need to think about the process of creating the content itself. And for many people, this will look different, but in the most basic form, you gather ideas, you plan posts for an X amount of time, move on to creating them, and then schedule or post your content. And of course, within the creation itself, you have many different steps depending on the type of content you're working on. So it usually involves creating graphics, choosing images, recording videos, writing captions, and selecting hashtags. And all of these steps will determine what we put on our board in terms of our columns and you can be as detailed or as general as you want to be. First, we can start with the ideas column. Of course, every content creation process starts with ideating, with coming up with different ideas for a post. So we can change the name of that default one to ideas list. The next one is going to be the going ahead one for any planned post for a specific amount of time. 
And by the way, you can name these columns or steps however you want. It's just my preference to do it this way. And you can click on the plus sign in here to add any new columns. All right, so I have all of my columns ready in here. So I've got my ideas list going ahead, writing caption, choosing image, choosing hashtags, ready to schedule and published. And of course, again, make it your own if you don't need all of these steps, if you just want to say in progress or you know creating content, that's absolutely fine. I just prefer it that way because it keeps me tied to the tasks ahead. Now, each post will be represented by one card here or one task. And to add a task, you can simply go to the column you'd like and click on the plus sign. And let's say we're doing a brainstorming session now and ideas is the best way to go. So when you click on the new task in here, you can actually open a full task view. And this is where you can really work out all of the details for your upcoming post. Okay, so let's say my next idea for a post would be the strategy versus execution post. So this is what I'm going to put in the title for this task and I'm going to assign it for myself because I'm the one dealing with all my content. The next section is the due date and this is where you want to include the specific date that you are going to publish your post on. So I'm going to go ahead, select Wednesday and it shows in here. The next section is the project section. This is obviously indicating which project this task belongs to. And you can actually see the status in here. So you can see the different columns that I've represented on my board and you can quickly change it in here if you're in the process of fleshing out your caption or maybe choosing an image, uh, but I'll discuss it a bit later on. Even though we have the basic structure for the calendar, we want to improve your experience and make it easier for you to distinguish between different platforms you create content for, right? To do this, what you want to do is assign tags. If you go to the top right corner in here and hit add tags, you open up that next section in here. And of course I've used Asana before, so I have them set up for myself. But if you want to create new tags, you can quickly start typing. Let's say I want a LinkedIn for this one. And a little pop-up box will appear with plus create tag for LinkedIn. And you'll be able to quickly choose a color as well. Why that's important is because it will help you color code it and kind of quickly identify which platform every post is going for. And that will play out in the different views that I'll discuss in a moment. So when you go to the calendar view, these will play quite a big role because again, they will help you easily distinguish between the different platforms. Now in the premium version of Asana, you can add custom fields that allow you to add even more information to your content calendar in the individual posts. This could be useful for indicating a content type like a reel, a single image post, long form video, blog post, etc. But I decided not to show this in this video. Firstly, because when I used Asana as my content calendar, I was a free user and managed absolutely fine this way. And secondly, because I want to keep it minimalistic for this video. That being said, it can add a level of efficiency to your content calendar. So if you do want to use it, you can set your custom fields from the board in here. If you go to customize, you'll be able to see that field and you can just add it from here. Back to our tasks, you have the description section in here where first I like to add ideas for the post. So if I'm creating a reel for Instagram or a TikTok, I can leave a link here for the sound and write a short summary of what I'm intending to do for it so that I know exactly what to do when I'm sitting down to create that content. Another great function in Asana that helps a lot with content creation is adding attachments, which means you can quickly add any of your images or graphics to the post itself. And to do this, you can simply go to the paper clip here at the top and you can select any of the files you want to attach for your task. And not only is it great because you can have your graphic for each post kept here, but you will be able to see this graphic from the board view like this. It's very neat because you'll be able to see at a glance which posts are missing graphics and whether you're staying on brand with the design or if anything stands out in the wrong way. The next very crucial piece of managing your content while in Asana is using subtasks. And if you think about a post, it's not just the idea that matters, but the execution is so important, clearly. Uh, and that's what we have subtasks for because they allow you to break down each post into those little actions that you need to perform to get that content out there. Why I love subtasks is that they're great for collaboration. So if you're working on a specific post or working with a designer, working with people who are editing your videos, for example, 
example, it's so much easier to just assign your subtests to them. And that's how you know that this collaborative effort is kind of you're staying on top of it. You know exactly where you are and who's doing what at what time. So from here, you can just quickly assign a task uh, for a specific day. So let's say this content is going out on Wednesday. I would write a caption today. I would design a graphic at a specific date. You can kind of quickly have that workflow ready and you can have all the different um, tasks batched in a specific day. And this is easy to manage within the subtasks. Again, all of these subtasks will appear in the My Tasks board for every member of your uh, project. So they will be able to view them. They'll know that you've assigned it for them. And again, if you're just a solopreneur, it keeps you on track and it helps you stay on top of all the dif different things. You'll know which ones are ticked off and which are not. Now, depending on the type of content you're creating, you will have different subtasks. And this one that we're creating in here is just a single image graphics. We have write a caption, design a graphic, choose hashtags, schedule and reply to comments. Now, all of them can be assigned to different people. And of course, if you're creating many kind of single image graphics or if you're creating reels all the time, you don't want to be typing out all of those subtests for each post you're creating, right? Because it's time consuming. Now to save yourself some time, you can actually quickly set up little templates for yourself. Let me switch to this one where I created a few different subtests for this. And this is an example of a reel that we would create. So you've got find the sound, write a caption, write the script, record the reel, edit the reel, design a cover, schedule and reply to comments. Now in the description box in here as well, I have a little kind of template for myself so I can quickly link to a specific sound. I can write a caption in here. I can script it. So I've got all the details that I need for the task at hand and I'll be able to repetitively kind of pull that up from my tasks. Now, Asana has an option to actually save your tasks as templates. You can go to the little three dots in here and you'll be able to convert tasks to a template. Now, this is a premium feature. This is not something that I've used before because back in the day when I was using Asana, this wasn't even an option. So a little workaround for this, if you want to just keep using the free version, would be to have this named master, let's say real. And what you would do each time you want to create a new reel, you would go to those three dots again and then duplicate task. What happens now is that it pulls up a pop-up box. You'll be able to choose all the different options for a task in here. I will just leave it as that and you'll be able to name it a different thing. So let's say um, real Canva tip number one. And if you create a new task, it's going to automatically copy all the different details you've got in here. And if I go to that task, you can see that I have all my subtasks ready. Now, what you can do is to go to your board, scroll to add a new section. That would be a new column. And I could just name it master and I'll move it straight ahead before my ideas list for easy access. And you can store all of your master tasks in this column so that you can quickly click on the three dots on them and just duplicate them. Repeat all the steps that I've shown you just a moment ago and you'll have all of your ideas quickly kind of added to your board without the hassle of having to add all of your subtasks or add any descriptions that you want to have in each of those content types. Now, as mentioned before, Asana has access to different view types and I'm going to quickly discuss what these are, how we can access them and actually what they're good for. Now, First of all, of course, we have the board view. It shows the process very well. So you'll be able to quickly drag your posts to different statuses and you'll know exactly where you are on your journey with creating your content. Now, the second view is your list view. And for those people who are list oriented, people who like to th tick things off as they go along, this is the perfect view. I know myself, I'm quite inclined towards to-do lists and that's one way of actually managing your content. Of course, the little downside of it is that if you have a ton of different content ideas, different things happening in here, it can become quite bulky, but Asana actually allows you to eliminate that. So you can quickly just toggle that little section in here. So your master, you can just close that down. You can close your ideas list and strictly focus on what's going ahead and where you are in your creation journey. So again, to switch between the different views, here at the top, you have the list in here, you have the board view. So that's how you switch between them. 
Now, the good thing about this is that when I'm changing something on the board view, so let's say this one is going towards scheduled, let's say I have it ready. If you go to the list view in here, it also changes place. So it's not like you need to kind of, you know, create that chaos in between the different views. It's all simultaneously happening. It's your project and it's changing statuses depending on what you're doing on these views. So that's amazing. And now the calendar view. Of course, it is a content calendar. This is what you want to kind of look at when you're creating different types of content. You'll be able to quickly see what is scheduled for what particular date. You'll be able to quickly move things around. So let's say I want this one to be pushed back a little bit. I'm going to just quickly move it in here. You can just juggle these things from here and manage them so much easier. So remember when I shown you how to actually tag different things, you see from here that this one is blue, which was LinkedIn. This one is pink, which is Instagram in this case. But of course, you can color code them the way you want. This, of course, relates to the specific color that you've assigned for a specific tag. And this is how you know exactly where things are, how many posts you've got for Instagram, how many posts you've got for LinkedIn, if you have a newsletter coming up, things like that. All of them can be seen at a glance in your calendar view. It's color coded, very easy to see. So that's why I love the calendar view as well. All right. So just to show you what the creation process would look like within your content calendar, what you want to start off with, of course, is to populate your content calendar with some of your ideas. Each time you do this, let's say I want to create a carousel, you would go ahead, duplicate your master. I'm going to name it Instagram story likes. I'm going to just move it to the ideas list. And now, of course, if you have some of the ideas, what you want to do is to, to prioritize some of them. So you plan some posts ahead of time, then you move them to the going ahead so you know which ones you'll be working on. Now, of course, you'll be moving posts through different sections. So the next thing you want to do is to flesh out our caption here in the description. I'm going to write it out. I'm going to attach an image from my computer or Google Drive, whichever one suits you best. And of course, once you finish any of those tasks, you'll be ticking them. They will be assigned to different people. You'll see exactly where you are on um, your journey. And once you're done, you can just move them to scheduled and published. And once you have all of the ones that you want to schedule, you will just move them to either later or Facebook business manager, where whatever platform you're using to schedule your post, this is where it needs to go. So this is what the content creation process looks like within the content calendar. You have the status, you see all of your posts at a glance, you know exactly what you need to work on, what you've got scheduled, what you have on your ideas list. You can keep adding things as they come along. You also have you also have an app on your phone to help you manage things on the go and that's why i think having a content calendar makes your life so much easier when it comes to creating content are you going to use the sauna for managing your content let me know in the comments down below and i'll be happy to answer any questions you may have in there as well if you'd like to learn how to use Asana as a beginner, make sure to watch this video here. It was actually the very first video I recorded for this channel, so there have been some upgrades in Asana since then, but the whole process and tutorial still stands, so if you want to learn the ins and outs of the platform, be sure to check it out. And if you're curious how I manage my content now in Notion, watch this video next. Thank you so much for watching, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time.